Hello guys, and today I'm going to cook some Italian food from a book called The Essential Pasta Cookbook, okay? And the meal I'm going to cook is called um, Rigatoni, I hope that's how it's pronounced, with sausage and parmesan. I've made this meal many, many times, okay? And I'm going to make it for you guys today. Now, what I do is I normally make about four or five days worth, and then I reheat it each day, okay? Um, so, the essential ingredients for it are olive oil, an onion. I happen to like red onions. I'm not sure if that's the best thing for this, but I use red onions because I like them. Um pork sausages now this is um, pork sausages for rich people essentially it says Tesco finest so it's for people with loads of money but because I'm tight they're out of date so they're one day out of date so I got them a lot cheaper than I would normally have done and I'm not bothered about one day um, they say you're supposed to use Italian pork sausage um, I can't be bothered with that. I'm not bothered with trying to find special sausages or anything stupid like that. So I've just got British pork sausage, okay? And Cumberland are some of the best sausages you can get, okay? Cumberland, I believe Cumberland sausages are even spe even have special EU um, protection status, I believe. that They've got to actually be made there, okay? Now, to have be good, be called Cumberland sausages, okay? Um, mushrooms, now... I've got more mushrooms than I even need, but this was down to finances, okay? Um, I got a whole pack of these for 10 pence, and it was cheaper to buy a whole pack of these than to buy as many mushrooms as I really wanted. So I'm going to eat these, but some of them sadly might end up in the bin, unfortunately, just because there's only so much I can eat, okay? But I will do those later. And um, dried white wine, I have no idea if it's dried or not, but this is some... Um, Wine from um, New Zealand. I, it's not expensive. I just got it cheap, and I only use this. I only use wine as the cooking ingredient, to be honest. Um, so rigatoni. Now, I wasn't sure. I just happened to be in a more expensive shop. I just saw this. I got it, but it wasn't that expensive, even though it's an expensive shop normally. So I got this from an M and S, which is normally an expensive shop, but this wasn't that expensive in my opinion, given that the branded one costs even more and I've never seen um, rigatoni um, except by anybody else by Napolina um, personally all the others seem to do pen or um, a fusilli or something like that um, to be completely honest the only difference is that it's thicker than pen but um, that's the only real difference um, you know, you could use, um, as far as I'm concerned, you could use pen. I've got lots of pen, but I just wanted to show you me using the real thing, okay? Um, I've also got some some cream. I'm using double cream, because I just like double cream, but I'm using cream. Um, eggs. I've got some eggs here. There's three left. I'm going to be using two of them. Um, some parmesan. Now, I'm too lazy, or it costs even more money, ironically, to actually buy it and grate it yourself because I've got to buy a truck more than I need. So I've got here a pack of what it says, Parm Parmigano Reggiano, and if you look below, it says Parmesan. Parmesan cheese is used a lot in Italian cooking, okay? So um, it's the main cheese they use, I believe, for this kind of thing, you know? And... Um, I've also got some parsley. And also, now you're supposed to use um, one clove of garlic and crush it. I'm too lazy, so I'm going to use garlic powder instead. Okay, because you can easily get this. Garlic powder, garlic granules, that sort of thing, okay? And those are the ingredients okay there's also um salt and pepper but I've, i use this so i put the salt and pepper into you know special salt and pepper shakers so you know 
it's not going to see anything really apart from the shakers which you'll see anyway so there you go guys that's the ingredients okay for this okay that you need as well as the salt and pepper like i said i'm too lazy to show you the salt and pepper shakers everybody knows what salt and pepper looks like it's got different you know okay right right so now guys that's that now you're going to see me preparing it okay okay right so first what i'm going to do is i'm going to slice the onion okay so i've got a plate here i've got a knife and i have an onion right so i'm now going to slice the onion okay now i don't know how this is going to work but you know that'll do okay I'm just going to chop the top off and throw it away throw this away just going to carefully peel off the outside cut the other end off Now what I like to do that. Do it like that just so that I can then go in and just peel off the onion outside. Outside outside the onion. The onion shell. Not shell. Skin, sorry. Onion skin. Sorry, not shell. What am I talking about? Right, okay. Right, so now I've got the onion. Now I'm going to slice the onion, okay? For this particular recipe, it tells you to slice the onion. So I'm going to slice the onion, okay? Right, now normally it's not a good idea to actually be just near the onion when you're slicing it because you'll start crying, but, you know, this is where I can film it for you guys, okay? And that slice didn't turn out too well. And that's what a slice when you should be like roughly so essentially it turns them into onion rings okay and you have these leftover bits okay <laughs> so I'm just going to chop them up I'm going to actually chop them instead it doesn't taste to do this, but it's what I'm doing because it's difficult sometimes to um, slice these perfectly. So I'm just going to chop them any way I can. So now I've generally got a lot of onion rings and a bit things I've chopped up, okay? <laughs> That's the onions dealt with. Now, while I try and stop crying, um, because normally you're not supposed to cut, you know, onions that close to you, but in some way I could film it, right? I'm now going to open up the um, mushrooms and I'm going to try and chop the mushrooms, okay? Now I admit I'm going to not do this in the nicest way possible but I'm going to essentially just peel them off so I'll peel the skins off the mushrooms I'm sure there's a better way of doing this, but it's the way I do it. Um, and I try to scrape off the outside. I know this is going to take a very long time because I've got so many mushrooms. It's unreal. Normally, I'd never buy this many mushrooms, as I said. But, you know... I'm just using my, I can use this as well, so I can scrape it off of this.
I'm using a knife to sort of just, you know, I can use I can just go around it with a knife actually for speed. I've got so many of them. I know this is a waste, but I've got so many of them. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> Alright. I've got more mushrooms than I need, truthfully, but there you go. It's cheaper to do it that way. And it also means less food is thrown away, you know, by Tesco's, you know. If people like us buy them because it's... Basically, it was about to expire that the same day. I don't know why... You know about expiry dates on mushrooms or things like that but they had an expiry date on them so they had to sell them but I don't think an extra day is going to make any difference for mushrooms to be totally honest with you so I'll do for that one. I'm not going to show you me doing any more because, to be honest, it's slowing me down. Trying to film it is drastically slowing me, slowing me down, truthfully. So I'm just going to do a lot more now, okay? I'm going to do it off camera because it's just take too time consuming, okay, to show you, okay? Okay, I've peeled all the mushrooms. I don't know if that's the right word, but now I'm going to slice them, okay? So now I'm going to create, I'm going to slice all the mushrooms, okay? So I'm going to cut them into slices like that, okay? They've got, After this, um, what I'm going to do, I'll just to tell you what I'm going to do while I um, cut these mushrooms, okay, slice them. Um, I'm going to put the onions and the olive oil into a frying pan and I'm going to fry the onions for a while. Now you're supposed to fry the um, garlic with the onions, okay? But I'm not going to, because when I've done it, it's always made a terrible mess in the frying pan at the bottom. And because I think they prefer to use proper chopped garlic or proper crushed garlic rather than me using um, garlic granules, it means that it might not make such a mess in the pan with perhaps a proper, you know, ungrounded garlic clove. But because I'm using, because I'm lazy and I'm using garlic powder instead, it will make a mess. So what I'm going to do is instead, I'm going to add the garlic powder when I add the um, wine, okay? Because I don't think it messes that much, to be completely honest with you, okay? And after that, um, once I've done the onions, then I'm going to add um, the mushrooms. Oh, do I add the mushrooms? Yes. Yes, once I've done the onions, then you do add the mushrooms and some um, chopped um, sausages. I'm just going to check that because I'm pretty sure that's the way it is. 
I've now chopped all the um I know I've now sliced all the and sliced all the um I've sliced all the um mushrooms now so in a minute I'll deal with the onions so I'm gonna check what I'm gonna do. Uh, Yeah, it says add the, the, sausage, the sausages and mushrooms. So, basically, um, I'm going to add the mushrooms first, just because they're already on the plate. Then I'll deal with the sausages, okay? Um, is that right? Mm, just to watch check. Okay, right. Yes, yeah, so, okay, so now what I'm going to do, is I'm going to put the um, onions into a frying pan. Um, I'm going to add the um, I'm going to heat up some olive oil in a frying pan first. I'm going to add to put the onions. Then once the onions are cooked, I'm going to put in the um, mushrooms. And then while the mushrooms are slightly cooking, I'm going to be chopping up the um, sausages because you're meant to cut the sausages, okay? And once you've chopped the sausages up. Um, you're meant to put them in the frying pan and fry the whole lot, okay? And then later add some wine, okay? So I'm carrying on watching, okay? The rest, what you're about to see now, will be done without any um, sound, really, or any um, commentary, because I've just told you what I'm about to do, okay? And it's fairly obvious what I'm actually doing, okay?
Okay guys, and now what I'm going to do is I'm now going to um, cut up the um, sausages. So I'm going to take the sausages out of the pack. And these are uncooked at this moment in time. Um, health and safety notice. Um, you should uh, you should use different knives depending on whether or not it's the meat is the food is um, using um, cold meat or not cold and cooked meat or not. If, okay, for health and safety reasons, so I'm using a different knife to a knife I'm going to use for anything else. Okay, right because I'm handling um, uncooked meat. Okay, and I'm going to um, put this into a, I'm trying to think of their fancy term, but. Um, yeah, they said cut into chunks. Their word is chunks, okay? So I'm going to just get one of these. I'm just going to start chopping them, okay? Often this is a bit messy, unfortunately, so... Because the skin often doesn't want to cut. I'm going to turn it round. Do three of these at once. Often this is awkward, I'm afraid, which is why sometimes I've cooked it, and then once I've cooked it, um, then I've cut them. But, um, well, I think you get the idea, so. The skin often doesn't want to, wants to, doesn't want to cut. Unfortunately, which is probably why I need, probably why I need um, a sharper knife, but. Never mind, it won't do. <laughs> It's even simple things like cutting is a disaster. I should have chosen a knife, but I didn't want to. Um, I wanted to use a knife that I knew I wasn't going to use again, but it's just... It'd probably be easier to do this with skinless ones, to be totally honest with you. But... It's really simple, honestly, but it's just... If anything can go wrong when you're filming things, they will. Which is why in the end I just um, used to cook them and then cut them afterwards. But um, I'm trying to do it the way they said. Okay? So you can see the proper way of doing it, even though it looks like an absolute total disaster because of the skin. It might be why they tell you to use proper Italian... Um, sausages I do not know but because these skins do not want to cut unfortunately I think I've just done too good a job on the skin anyway another technique I used sometimes was to actually cut it in the pan using um, I went out using um, a spatula, but anyway, I've now got some chunks of um, sausages, okay? And lots of these chunks, they're going to go in the frying pan, okay? Now, that's somewhere a minute. Right, now, and this is probably going to go wrong as well, because if anything can, it will. Now I have some um, Warawa Cove, New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc. It's white wine, okay. Dated 2019, so it's proves it's cheap. Because if it was expensive, it'd have some really old date. And I'm going to put in 150 millilitres, okay? Okay. And what I'm going to do then is I'm going to use this later when you see me cooking it. Right? 
Uh, and I'm not going to bother washing the cup, this um, jug afterwards. I'm going to reuse the cup without bothering to wash it because it doesn't matter because the whole lot will be mixed anyway, eventually. So even when I put the next mixture in after this, um, I'm not going to bother actually washing the thing because it doesn't make any difference because it'll all get mixed eventually anyway, okay? Right, so I'll now um, put the sausages and, the, and later this into a frying pan. So, so I basically cook the sausages first, then I add the wine, okay? Right, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the um, rigatoni into a saucepan. I've got a saucepan here. I'm going to put the rigatoni into a saucepan. Okay, it says to use it for 10 or 15 minutes. I'm probably going to put it on for longer than that. Not necessarily because I want to, but because um, of the filming problems, okay? So I'll probably just turn it down, okay? So it may be overdone, but I'm not worried about overdone pasta, okay? So, I'm not now... I'm not sure we've actually told you how much um, rigatoni to use, um, but I just put in as much as I feel like, to be totally honest with you. Right, I'm just going to see, they actually do tell you. Hmm. Yeah, they say um, 500 grams of rigatoni. Um, how much is actually in here? Mm, 500 grams. So they say you've got to use a whole lot, okay? all of that the whole packet but I'm obviously only cooking for myself so I'm going to do this a bit each day so I'm just going to put in as much as I feel like okay oh that's too much far too much and while I'm at it now now that I've opened the packet I'm going to show you the rigatoni this is the rigatoni okay it looks exactly the same as pen from what I can work out. The only difference is, is that it actually has a bigger diameter. So in other words, it's, the hole is bigger. That's the only real difference from what I can tell. Okay. And now it's in here in the saucepan. And now I'm going to add some boiling water and add it to the cooker. Okay. And I'm going to do that for about 10 or 15 minutes. Okay. While I'm doing that, um, I'm now going to be um, mixing the rest of the mixture. Okay. Um, which you'll see in a minute, okay?
I have the jug. As I said, I've left the out the wine in the bottom. The, the, you know, I've poured all the wine out, but I haven't bothered washing it because there's no point. Because this mixture is going to be added to the wine mixture, wine and you know, onions and sausage and mushrooms, etc. So, gar. Oh yeah, I forgot to add the garlic. Okay, I'll add the garlic in a minute. Okay, I've just realised I forgot to add the garlic. Okay, so. I'll do that in a moment, okay? Now, what I'm going to do is while it's doing that, okay, is I'm going to um, pour, put in the eggs. So first of all, I'm going to do the eggs first because they're the awkward bits, okay? The rest is easy. So I'm going to basically break a couple of eggs. Into the jug. That's one egg. That's the other egg. So now I have two eggs in here. I just checked there's no. Right, so now I've got the eggs. I kind of just thought there might be a little tiny thing in there that I wasn't sure about. So I'm just. I'm going to whisk this now, so I get the fork, and beat the eggs, Now, I'm going to make some black pepper. We're okay to just use pepper. I'm going to use black pepper because black pepper matters, guys. You know? But you can use white, I believe. I'm just going to shake it in. And that'll do. Now I'm going to put in some salt. I've got some salt. Normally I'd sprinkle it in, but because we're cooking with it, I'm just going to shake some in. That should be enough. Now you're meant to put in a lot of parsley. I'm not sure how much I've got, but it doesn't matter. They said... Um, 50 grams of parsley what? I can't be serious oh no that's parmesan lucky two tablespoons right so you're meant to put in two tablespoons of parsley I'm too lazy I thought that sounded ridiculous right 50 grams of parsley okay I'm too lazy to actually um and get a tablespoon out. I'm just going to guess it to be honest. So I'm just going to put in quite a bit and use up most of it. But it is officially two tablespoons. I've done this many times, so I have a rough idea how much it should be. Okay. As I said, that's the um, parsley. Okay. Now. I'm going to beat this for now. And now, I'm going to add in some of the parmesan. Now, they said you're supposed to use 50 grams of, par of, par of, um, <coughs> of parmesan. <coughs> and they said... Um, use half of it so they said um they said use 50 grams of, of parmesan 
this particular um, packet is 80 grams um, and they said use half of that so in other words they want you to use about 25 grams okay but I'm gonna have to do something I didn't want to do I'm gonna have to um I should have done this first actually but I'm gonna I know you shouldn't really do this but I'm gonna have no choice because I'm filming I'm gonna use the fork to pierce it mm -hmm. so otherwise it will not open I should have done all this before to be honest okay right that's what I wanted right now I'll get some of this out so I meant to use about probably about a third of it roughly I just pour straight in I said you can get your own parmesan and grate it yourself but it was actually cheaper to buy pre-grated than to buy a big block of parmesan which I didn't need okay and now I believe the only other ingredient left is um, the um, yeah. So the only other ingredient now is the um, is the cream. Okay. Now I got some double cream. Okay. Um, M&S weren't the cheapest but I just happened to go there first because they had um, basically um, because I've often they haven't had the rip some of the pasta I want in Tesco's and they just happened to have it while I was there and also just want to, I just want to see if there's any bargain in there this wasn't a bargain but just in case Tesco's had run out of cream for once I just paid a bit extra okay so there you go that's double cream now they do say you can use single cream I'm going to use double cream this is um, 300 milliliters they tell you to use 250 um, so I don't think it matters to be honest but I might just keep a bit back just for my own reasons okay so you can have it with something okay so now I'm going to pour in the cream and I'm going to leave a little bit in the bottom just for my own reasons okay so I might have a jelly with it or something okay and now I'm just going to whisk this as well right now so this is basically it I might add a bit more um, of the cheese to be honest so just so it goes a bit thicker so I might add some more cheese in it so and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, I'm going to open up the garlic because I should have probably done this earlier but it doesn't matter I'm going to open up the garlic it's, it's a brand new one so it says Tesco's garlic powder I do have some downstairs but it's going a bit stiff so I thought I'd get some brand new a brand new one now I'm going to add this to the frying pan with the um, wine you're supposed to put this in right at the very beginning but I don't like it because it makes the pan um, sticky and a terrible mess so I usually put it in with the wine okay because you can use proper garlic cloves I'm too lazy so now I'm going to put this in stir it round and then later I'm also going to heat up put um, a plate onto the um, saucepan and then I'm going to check I've done everything yeah and then what I'm going to and I'm going to tell you why I'm going to do this in a moment okay I'm going to once I've done put some of this in I'm going to cook it for a short period of time then cook most of the most of it into um, a plastic tub okay so I can eat it the I can eat it the next day now I'm going to tell you now so I'm too late to tell you later okay what I do is I put it in a tub and I put it in the fridge 
Now, what usually happens is, uh, when you get up the next day, it solidifies in some way. So it's very, very solid, okay? It's not like a, a creamy mixture like you see now, or when I cook it. It goes very solid, okay? And so to what I do is I take it out the next day, put, it, put that into a frying pan or a saucepan. Um, sometimes I just heat. What I do is I cook the rigatoni in a saucepan the next day. Then I throw the water out. And then I put in the um, however much I want from this now solid. I've had, no, I leave some of the water in. So I put what I do is I normally cook the rigatoni the next day. I'm telling you what I do the next day, not now, but the next day. I put some of the I cook the rigatoni. Then I leave some. I pour most of the water out. I leave just a small amount of it in. Okay, um, deliberately, so that the solid mixture will turn into a liquid, which is what we want. And then I cut out. Um, now the now solidified mixture from the tub add it to the um, saucepan and just stir it round and that's how I, I reheat it the next day okay so to summarize the next day but I know you're not seeing that now I basically I'm going to get the, mi the mixture from the tub which you'll see me now put it into in a minute later okay and add that to the um, cooked rigatoni when I've cooked it with a little bit of water left in I may show a video on that sometime, okay? But in the meantime, I'm going to carry on with this, okay? So now I'm going to add the garlic to the frying pan, wait a while till it's gone down a bit, and then I'm going to add all of this to the frying pan, wait a few minutes, pour most of the whole lot into a tub, ready for a few more days, um, you know, so I can eat it within the next few days, and then... I'm going to, you know, cook it and you'll see me do it and then I'll come back and eat it, okay? But the rest of this you will not see any commentary, so, but it will be obvious what I'm doing, okay? Right, so, so I'm going to put this into the frying pan, well not the whole plastic container obviously, <laughs> and then the liquid from this into the frying pan later, and then you'll see, because it'll be obvious, okay? And then I'm going to, then once I've done that I'll be, um, taking out the rigatoni, I've drained the rigatoni, I'll put the rigatoni in with the frying pan, mix it around, then put the whole lot onto a plate. Okay? See you soon. Carry on watching.
Okay, so now it's cooked, okay? So this is the end result now. It's not quite the end result, actually, because I've got to sprinkle some parmesan on top, okay? But I'm going to show you once it's cooked. This is a bit of sausage. That's a bit of sausage. That's what it's supposed to be like. It's supposed to be like chunks of sausage. But unfortunately, because of the way they tell you to do it, and because it's, I know it sounds ridiculous, the hardest thing to do is actually to cut the sausages in this. And I know it sounds ridiculous, but it's the truth. Right, um, often it, you end up with what I would call minced pork because the sausage tends to fall apart if you don't cut it properly, which is why I said I think personally the best way of doing it is to cook the sausages, then chop them up. But I did it their way, even though it's difficult to cook the sausage, it might be easier to cook the sausages if I was you know doing it in the kitchen or whatever. People say, Why don't you use the kitchen? The trouble is, is that sometimes I get sound issues. And sometimes it's just annoying and um, you know people don't like looking at my kitchen because it could do with a bit of a clean although it's okay you know so you know, just things like the floor and stuff you know but um there you go now what I'm gonna do so apart from, but apart from presentation you know in that a lot of it looks just like truthfully mince pork apart from presentation where it's meant to look like this chunks of sausages apart from presentation it's perfect okay so now i've got going to use some of the leftover grated cheese and i sprinkle that over the top and i can do this by just tapping it And so now you can see grated, I've got to be careful, you can see grated cheese, I don't know how good the camera is, it's probably awful. But there's now grated cheese um, on the top, okay? And if I get just this for example, you'll see. It's got grated cheese on the outside, okay? Now, I'm going to eat it, okay? As I said, I've cooked this meal many, many times. And the sausages have nearly always been the problem, cutting them. I probably should have used a different knife. I'm trying to keep one particular knife for fruit and opening things up. Rather than to chop in sausages and things. Okay. That's from the by minced pork, which it's not really meant to look like, but so instead it's supposed to look like that, but it doesn't matter. It's only presentation, so if you don't care about the look of it. Otherwise, you just got to do a very good job of chopping the sausages, okay? This is truthfully probably my favourite recipe from this particular pasta book. I probably have it more than anything else. And so, if you want to cook um, your own Italian dish using pasta, um, that's an idea you might want to follow, okay? You can also have this if you're a Muslim without um, alcohol and using beef instead.
I think this also shows the problem of trying to cook skinless sausages. They weren't skinless sausages, but you know, if they had been skinless, then I think trying to mix them around the pan would also be pro a problem. You know, I said it might be why they tell you to use specific Italian sausage, or I think it said salami, but I'm. I've always used <coughs> British pork sausages, truthfully. Because they're cheap and easier for me to find, truthfully. Okay? Especially in the sale, you know? I'm nearly finished now. Oh yes, I can tell before so I show you again. The book is The Essential Pasta Cookbook. News. And I'm trying to see if I can see the um, published date. And this book even shows you how to make pasta from scratch, and you know, like with eggs and things like that. Oh my god. For those people who don't like China, okay, you can't even escape China with a book, okay, if you are one of these people that doesn't like China, because it says on here, um, um, printed in China. And um, it states it was printed in 1997. Yeah. There you go, guys. You can't even escape China's influence when you're buying a recipe book, okay? I'm amazed at that, actually. I'm, I'm astonished that it was printed in China. Absolutely astonished. Because we have lots and lots of um, printing companies in Britain, and I'm amazed. But there you go. So, as I said, that's how you cook and eat um, rigatoni with sausages. Rigatoni with sausages, sausage and parmesan. And if you're wondering what it's actually supposed to look like when you've done it pretty much um at the bottom they've shown a picture of it this is showing a picture of it if you'd actually cut the sausages pro properly okay and that's their picture of it okay so Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.